Last week we looked at um, taking from the invisible realm. So we're measuring faith within the boundaries of these three things. Um, last week we leaned into the invisible realm to be released to the visible realm. And um, we also um, learned about the sense of living and forsaking all for the voice of God. And we had several examples um, we were able to see um, that even when Jesus had to tell the rich man to sell everything else and follow him, um, it was difficult for him. Then he had to tell um, some other guy to follow him and his excuse was that he needed to go um, bury his his father and the purpose really was for him to receive his inheritance and we're seeing that um this this mighty men of faith were able to engage all of this because um they they were leaning into the the, the supernatural and so when god would tell them anything they would leave everything else and just go after the voice of god you know, we were fascinated with um, Abel. How how was he able to know that um, he was going to pick up a, a lamb, right? He sacrificed a lamb and Abel's sacrifice was um, much more valuable than Cain's sacrifice. Cain's sacrifice was totally rejected. Um, and we saw that um, Jesus Christ is the lamb of God. So in other words, Abel was able to reach into the supernatural realm and see the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world that will be slaughtered. We have a whole teaching on the Lamb of God. I strongly advise you to go watch that teaching. It will just blow your mind away about the Lamb of God that was slain. So in light of that teaching, you can imagine that Abel was able to reach into that and see that. And so when he was offering something to the Lord, he was offering something on the earth that will bring about our salvation. You know, um, we give our authority to the enemy. God gave man the rule and the dominion of earth, all of creation, when he said light be and give um, light the daytime portion, it was for us. The darkness was for the night, it was for us. When God created, when he separated the waters and there were others in the, in, the, in the sky and he put a firmament in between, all of that was for you and I. When he created the animals, the birds, it was for you and I. All of creation was created for man to come and take absolute dominion. The plants, the, the seed bearing plants, the fruit bearing trees, all of that was for us. So we were given total dominion and for man to stoop down and why, why I'm talking about all this for the newcomers is because we're, we're, we're dwelling on Hebrews 11 and we saw in, we see in Hebrews 11 that God had to have faith, that he used his faith in creation. So we also have teachings on engaging God's faith in creation. Uh, if you watch those, you'll see, you you get a, a clearer understanding of um, where I'm coming from. So for man to have all this dominion and authority, but then go under something else. Because when we hear the voice of someone, we are coming under their authority. If our boss tells us to do something and we go and do, we follow after the voice of our boss, we come under his dominion. If our parents say, do this. And we follow after the voice of our parents, we come under their dominion. So for, for God to say, okay, uh, this all belongs to you. You have dominion. Okay, name these animals. Man had all the authority and placed this animal, gave them all the names they have. Exercise dominion. Man was made from the earth. Man was made from the earth. The same earth. We had a, a, an extensive study where we saw that um, the earth was, um, God gave room for the earth to come forth and he planted seeds, you know, and the earth had life and substance and God made man from the earth so that man can have dominion on the entire, in the entire earth realm. So for man to take all of that and come under the dominion of a serpent, because God said there's these two trees, the tree of life. You know, but the one of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil do not eat. And there was a serpent there 
that spoke to them and they listened after the voice of that serpent and came out under the dominion you know mm -hmm. so the fact is that we have given our authority to the enemy the enemy had no basis to 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 have the he really had no authority he was not ha giving any authority but we who were giving authority over everything decided to listen after the voice of the enemy and then we handed our authority to the enemy and that's why he's doing whatever he is doing right now with with, with us but as we go through these teachings we will see that all of our fathers they were coming into agreement just like they came into agreement in when just like adam came into agreement with god to name the animals just like adam came into agreement to have dominion uh, uh, over everything adam also came into agreement to to allow the enemy take his authority because god said if you uh, god said i made you in my likeness let us make man in our image and likeness in his image and likeness he made he made he them so um for man to begin to hear the serpent say that um if you eat this you're gonna be like god you know that was just a twisted lie because they were already as god so what would eating the f forbidden fruit how would eating that which was forbidden make them like god but they chose to come into agreement with that lie and that was how they lost the opportunity so afterwards god had an awesome plan but man had to now again begin to come into agreement with god again for the salvation of man for the restoration of the adam that he made in the garden that had communion and fellowship with him and it was a whole process and um hebrews 11 is remarkable in showing us all the places that these fathers were able to reach into the invisible realm and pull into this realm God's heart for you and I. They, because man has the authority to reign on the earth, God said the high, the heavens, even the highest heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. So we have been given the earth. And until a son decides to go in with the Lord and agree with the Lord and say, yes, Lord, come and do your will on earth. Until we begin to do that, God will not come and impose himself on us. God is a faithful, loving God that chooses not to usurp his um, authority. He has given us free will. He has given us the, the, the ability to choose what we want, you know, and every powerful leader has, to, every powerful leader and true leader that follows after the Lord has to give people the power to choose. And so we see Abel giving that um, sa sacrifice of the lamb was him agreeing with the Lord. Yes, I agree that the lamb of God will come upon the earth and be slain. And we see that happen when he sacrificed the lamb to God. And God was so pleased with that sacrifice because, yes, man, the process of restoring man had already begun. Amen. So we saw that, um, we saw that um, even later on in Exodus um, 12, verse 5 to 6. I'm just going to throw out the scriptures um i've already sent this to you guys so that i wanted you guys to you to interact with those scriptures and see that um what abel did thousands of years ago later on the israelites were gonna do the same thing you know and then later on you know G even jesus christ was gonna come onto earth and manifest the same thing so just to show you you know how you know, backdated it was that this whole process of restoring us began. Then we also looked at Enoch. Enoch, um, he, he introduced a lifestyle for us to have the ability to step into the kingdom realm with God. And scripture says that Enoch walked with God and he was not. And because God took him, we have references in Zechariah 3, 7, um, where it says that, 
um, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then also you shall rule my house and have charge of my courts, and I will give you access to my presence and places to walk among these who stand here. And when you watch the teachings on the courts of heaven, you will see that Joshua was going to walk where places in heaven. And the same word that was used in, in concerning Joshua um, is a Hebrew word that um, was also used concerning Enoch. And that Hebrew word is halakha, to go. So Enoch brought into to, to this realm the ability to step into the kingdom realm of God and have fellowship with the Lord. You know, not staying on the outskirts. And we see that it was a normal thing that men of God would do. They would go in and out of the kingdom. And we saw that even Jesus would do that. Um, we have all these teachings that um, show us how this man operated. And then we were able to go into the next person we looked at was um, Abraham. He had to leave his entire family, everything he was used to, right? Um, living and forsaking everything just for the voice of the Lord. His fathers were used to a certain way of life and here was God showing up and saying, you know what, leave all of that and follow after me. And he followed after the voice of the Lord. And that's, you know, that's, he, he had so much opposition. He was looking for a city whose maker was God, the architect whose maker was God. And we are learning that, that for ourselves, we we have to take to account what is it that is so um, precious to us that we cannot um, forsake if God says forsake it now and go after me you know I'm gonna lead you on that path what is it that will stand in the way those are the things that we wanna we wanna be able to get rid of in the spirit realm we wanna step into the Lord and you know remove those attachments you know last week Valerie even gave us an example about somebody having a cupboard and he didn't want to lose that cupboard. But the thing was that what was in that cupboard was the thing that was hindering him from moving forward. And the Lord was saying, lose the stuff, lose that cupboard, you know. So the thing, most of the time, the things that we hold on to are the very things that the enemies are using to stop us from receiving what God has allotted to us. Amen. And um, today we we introduce the the third um, aspect where it is choosing the foolish things of God. And so I want um, whoever is in First Corinthians um, to go in there and let's uh, go to First Corinthians one twenty five, please. Instead of starting from twenty five, let's start from. Let's start from 18. First Corinthians 1, 18, right? Yes, please. But the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Can I continue? Yes, I, I think that is... Um, so we have to note that um, it sounds foolish to those who are already perishing, right? But to us, it is the power of God. Um, so just to have that mindset in the way we access God's kingdom. Okay, go ahead, please. For it is written, written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Amen. Amen. That's explanatory to what God is going to do. What God is, he's already doing it, you know. Um, go ahead, please. Where's the wise man? Where's the scholar? Where's the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? So all, all of those are the, the, the blockages, you know. Um, the, 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 the philosopher, you know. All the, 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 the engagements with the things of the world so much so that it blocks you from um, being aware that there is a spirit realm that you need to access. 
and the things that go on in the spirit realm don't make sense in the natural sense of it um so just put that in perspective too as we as we progress thank you linda but since in the wisdom of god the world through its wisdom did not know him god was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe amen amen amen, amen. um think about the foolish the foolishness of how it sounds that god himself would send his own son to come and die as a human on the earth. That is what Satan never saw. Satan never saw that type of shift. What Satan saw was God creating a human being who had the authority and power as God. He saw God come in a very powerful form. In creation, everything was so powerful. It was so amazing to behold what a powerful God was displaying. But for the same God to begin to come in the likeness of a man who was no longer as powerful, who was in his fallen state, to choose to come as a fallen man, not fallen in the sense of Jesus being a sinner, Fallen in the sense of Adam had given his authority over the enemy. To see that God would choose to come in that form and allow the very people that he was going to save to kill him, that is the side of God that the enemy never saw. Are we getting this? Yeah. So I just want yeah. us to see yeah, how... How God's way of doing things are and how in the enemy's way of thinking and operating he will it's it's difficult for him to see the possibility of God stooping to that level that's why Jesus Christ even though God did not consider it did not consider equality with God but humbled himself and died the death on the cross. Dying on the cross was one of the most shameful deaths because you were stripped naked. So if you are, if you see, if you can look into the mind of Satan, that sounded so foolish and so powerless and so weak. But this is how God works. When he told um, um, Abraham to leave his family, he had everything set there for him. He had a wife, him and his brother Nahor. They had family, everything was good. And now he had to leave all that and go to a place. Oh, Abraham, where are you going? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just heard God say, let's go. And I'm going. Okay, okay, are you going to come back? I don't know. Um, what plan do you have? Um, Sarah's mom will be like, what plan do you have for a daughter? Um, when she starts having kids, um, you know, where are we going to come visit? Well, what's going to, oh, I don't know. Do you know how s foolish that sounds? <laughs> you know? So, um, just the sense of, in the human sense, in a philosopher's way of thinking, in an academy, academic, academic, Maya's way of thinking, in um, an intelligent person's way of thinking, um, in uh, a smart person's way of thinking, a wise man's way of thinking, it doesn't add up. You know, that's why Cain will go and till the ground and get all the beautiful crops from his hard work, sweat. Uh, you know, and, and present it and be like, yes, you know, this is all my hard work. This is food that is going to nourish the human flesh, the human body. And he was very carnal in thinking that that was what God wanted. 
God wanted a man who was able to reach into the invisible realm and pull salvation onto the earth so that man is returned to the design that God had made him to be. Continues, um, Linda. Jews demand miraculous signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. And this is why it would be hard, you know, not just for Jews, you know, but even for us, you know, we're always seeking for a sign. You know, you seek for a sign, you're looking for some wise words, you know, we're always some motivational words, some um, things that will just um, tickle the flesh, you know, uh, make me feel good, like tickle my eyesight, external eyesight, when I see a miraculous sign, like, whoa, see what I see, you know, when I hear something, tickles my ear, you know, and scripture talks about how people in the last days, you know, many will flesh, um, but Jesus Christ did not try to tickle all of that. <laughs> He came to redeem you and I so that we can operate in the way God designed us to operate. And that is what it's all about. It's not all, it's not, it has nothing to do with the flesh. It has nothing to do with how cool it sounds. It's all about him doing whatever it takes, even humbling himself to die on the cross in an act, in, a, in an act that seems so foolish, so weak, so low but with a powerful spiritual meaning. And that's why somebody like Abel will just take a lamb, a spotless lamb and sacrifice. It may look like there was no um, natural effort put into it, but he was reaching into something in the spiritual and doing it on the earth. Anybody seeing it will look like, what is that? But in the spirit, he was saying that, God, I come into agreement with you. That your son will come and sacrifice himself so that humanity can be restored to the design of God. So that we can walk in the authority that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Please proceed, Lila. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. Continue, please. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Wow, wow. So this is also a sense of, you know, whatever you think, you know, it's what it's just just changing our mindset of the things that men look at as strength is not strength with God. Amen. Please go on, Lena. That's 25. Yes, please read 26. Okay. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were white by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. Wow. Wow. And 27 says, please read 27. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the white. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Amen. 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 So, Amen. <laughs> you know, when you read that, you just look at yourself and you're like, wow. My sisters, my brother. When you look at yourself and you look at your history and everything you're dealing with right now, that in the worldly sense, it looks like you're weak or you're struggling or you have all this challenges for you to engage this faith now is for you to know that you are the exact candidate that god has chosen to display his own wisdom for the fact that you are not from some royal or earthly family or some powerful earthly bloodline makes you the exact candidate for God to display his superior wisdom 
you know, when I read that place, I'm just like, wow, you know, this is the full, I, I look at myself, I'm like, this is the foolishness of God. I am the foolishness of God. Where a man will look and be like, no, no, she doesn't qualify, but that's what qualifies you. In other words, there is no point dwelling on the challenge that you face right now because that was only used as a qualification for the greater work of God in your life. And as this study was going on, I had this, this um, I could see that many of us are struggling to believe you know, we've prayed, we've fasted, we've done everything and we feel like we're not getting results. How about we step into the invisible realm with the Lord? Step into the place with the Lord and see what he sees. He sees that you are the vessel. You have the calling that will display his wisdom. Amen. 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 Let's go to Hebrews 11 and we'll just add um, one more person to our list of um, faith and move on from there. You want to read it 17? Yes, please, Valerie. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Mm -hmm. I just, what, what do you, measuring that action within these three boundaries on the board, what do you see? So, oh. le leaning into the invisible to be released in the visible, leaving or forsaking all for the voice of God and choosing the foolish things of God. Which of this can you measure? Can you measure that scripture? Can you use to measure that scripture? And tell me why. Can you read them one more time, Nadia? Leaning, leaning, lean, leaning into the invisible realm to be released into the visible realm into the supernatural realm in from from the supernatural realm to the physical realm that's number one then forsaking we talked a lot about forsaking everything last week forsaking everything else and following after the voice of god that's number two then number three choosing the the one we're settling on today choosing the foolish things of god i think the second one awesome tell us why Listening to the voice of God, because it said, who had received God's promises was ready to sacrifice his only son. So to me, when you, you, the promises of God, it's like listening to God's voice, God's word. You know, that's what I look at it as. That is so powerful. No matter what it, the cost, right? Because he forsook everything else. You know, you yeah. have to think about, you have to think about, how long it took Abraham to have that son. And then now he has to go and sacrifice that son. You're right. So you're yeah. very right. Um, somebody else should give me another. What else you see in that scripture? One. One. Good. Can you tell me why, Erica? Only because I've, I've heard that before, but I don't know. The sacrificing of your only son, that's pulling from heaven because God the Father sacrificed Jesus, his only begotten son. You hit the bull's eye right there. That is so beautiful. So this is the second person we're seeing that is agreeing with God for him to come and sacrifice his only begotten son. Abel agreed that the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world will be uh, slaughtered. 
that was something he received in the supernatural realm and as you so beautifully said it's erica a man of the earth has to be willing has to be willing to sacrifice his own only begotten son and the worth of isaac was increased by how much stress abraham had to go through to have isaac in his old age a promise that lasted for years until he was so old his son, his brother nahor had had already had like 12 sons they married to get at the same time but nahor had already had 12 sons and one of his sons already had a child nahor was already a grandpa 